What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is going to be Insecure, <clears throat> excuse me, Season 5, Episode 5. Now, we open this episode up, baby. Molly is getting it in. Do you hear me? Okay. She got that man spelling her name with his tongue in her nether region. Okay. And they get done doing what they doing. And she realizes that her phone has been blowing up. So she looks at her phone and she's got a call from her dad, her brother, and her auntie, okay? And she realizes that something is wrong. So she, we find out that her mom has had a stroke there at the hospital. And you know, listen, it, they gave us a little comic relief, but I could also relate to what they were doing. You know, the doctor came to get them to take them to see the mom. They take her to the wrong room. It's just a black woman in the bed, and it ain't their mama. And, of course, they're like, oh, my God, like, this is not my mom. And, you know, that. And then they go to leave, and then the real family is standing there waiting, you know, to go in. And, listen, that happened to me. I hope none of my family's listening to this because I won't traumatize nobody. But that happened to me with my uncle. When we went to go view the body, you know how you go view the body? We went in. It was not him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It was horrible. It, it wasn't funny. And it was very traumatic for all of us, right? It was just, oh my God. Um, he was across the hall. They took us in the wrong room. So I have seen that happen before. And you are sitting there like, that is not, what is going on with this situation? Of course, the doctor was very apologetic. Then they do finally take them to the right place. And then her mom, their mom is unconscious in a coma. The dad don't know what to do. Either, you know, don't know what to do. Um, and the nurse is trying to ask him questions about her blood pressure, do our job. And he sort of snaps at her, which again is understandable. And I'm sure the nurse understood. So Molly was like, listen, put me down as, you know, somebody that y'all can talk to because my dad is just not in a place to handle this, but I, you know, I can handle it. So please just, you know, put me down. Now, while all of this is going on, we see that Issa and Nathan are living their best honeymoon phase of life and their relationship you know she didn't spend the night at his place he bringing her coffee in bed you know they you know she asked him what he had to do that day and he was like well you know a couple of clients canceled on me so i'm kind of free for the morning and she was like oh for real yeah i was supposed to meet with um meet up with my sister but you know she kind of called out she's sick you know um so i mean you got some free time i got some free time you know and it's sort of like that awkward, nobody really wants to say, well, let's hang out together, but nobody, but that's what they really want to do. And so, you know, Ethan was like, well, do you need some me time? Because I know we said we was going to take things slow this time. So, if, you know, if we spend a little too much time together, I don't want to overstay my welcome. And he was like, nah, I mean, I get it. And she said, well, I was supposed to go to lunch with Molly later on, but you know, she always be rescheduling during the week. And he was like... Well, you need, you might want to go ahead and call her. You know, you don't want to waste a reservation. She was like, yeah, you know, that would be, you know, that would be irresponsible of us to waste that reservation. And so they call Molly. And of course, she's joking with Molly. She's like, girl, what you doing? Reading a book or something? You reading with your reading ass? And Molly tells her what's going on. And of course, Issa immediately jumps into friend mode. Now, what I thought was absolutely hilarious is that Molly must have been at old boy's house, right? Because... She is straight up sit sitting in the hospital in her whole freakum dress, okay? That is clearly what she wore that night on the date. That is clearly what she had on at Old Boy House. And she clearly did not go home to, to change, uh, which I probably wouldn't have either. I don't know. Um, um, so, they, um, so Issa gets Nathan to take her to the hospital. And he's like, well, let me know. Keep me posted. And she was like, well... You know, I um, you know, I don't want to hold up your whole day. I'm not really sure what's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen or whatever. And he was like, "Don't worry about it. You know, just keep me posted. I got you." So she goes into the hospital and she jumps into friend mode. Girl, I'm so sorry. What do you need from me? What can I do? And Molly was like, "Girl, I'm good. You know, it's just, you know, I'm worried about my dad. You know, he just can't handle it. I'm, you know, jumping into Molly mode, worrying about everybody except for Molly." Want to take care of everybody except for mommy, you know? And so Issa was like, well, do you want me to, you know, you need me to do anything? And she was, you know, you need to eat anything. They got a vending machine. She was like, no, I'm good. Issa was like, ha, how about some clothes? Because you sit in the hospital in your freaking dress. And she's like, girl, thank you. 
So she said, well, I'm going to go to your apartment and go get you a change of clothes. She said, but in the meantime, you want to go ahead and wear my clothes? Because, again, you are sitting here in your freaking dress. So they go in the bathroom and they change clothes. You know, they exchange clothes, you know. And, of course, Issa was like, oh, I look good. Okay, I look cute, you know. And she was like, well, did you have sex in that outfit last night? Because I did. And I was like, again, you just see where their relationship is and how close they are and how Issa immediately jumped into friend mode and was like, girl, what do you need from me? However I can do it, I'm going to make it happen. So Nathan ends up picking Issa back up from the hospital. And, of course, now she got the freaking dress on. And Nathan is like, you know, and Issa was like, well, yeah, can you give me a ride to Molly's? apartment because she you know i gave her my clothes because she needed to change the clothes you know nathan was like yeah i wasn't gonna ask okay i wasn't wasn't gonna ask so they get to um molly's apartment Issa trying to figure out an outfit and of course flavor flavor is there and nathan is like so what's up with the what's up with the dog and he was she was like oh yeah molly love that thing <laughs> you can tell Issa is over it <laughs> you know and he was like, well, the dog don't have no food, don't have no water, and we do need to walk him. Issa was like, I mean, he ain't no dog. He be, he be all right. Nathan was like, girl, girl, we're going to walk this damn dog. So they um they go to walk the dog, child, and, um you know, Issa is letting him know that Molly is just being Molly. You know, I got it all under control. I got it covered, you know. And her mom, he said, yeah, she said, yeah, you know, I called my mom and left a real sweet message on the phone. He said, yeah, I called my mom too. So while they're on the walk, walking the dog, her mom calls them. And of course, her mom is being her mom. Oh, that was so sweet, baby. That message you left me. Thank you so much. I love you too. She was like, she, she was like, you know, yeah, we do need to spend more time together, girl. What you doing for the next eight Sundays? Because I'm starting a book club. And, you know, she she's just having a moment. And Issa is like, mom. Like the next eight Sundays, though. Like, I mean, I would say we need to spend more time together. I don't know about the next eight Sundays. So she was like, "Girl, who are you talking to? Who is that you keep looking at?" So Issa was like, "Oh, it's it's, it's Nathan." She was like, "Nathan, is that Nathan?" Is, is so she said, "Let me see Nathan." So he gets in the screen. He's like, "Hey, Miss D, you know," and she was like, "Are you are you Issa's boyfriend?" And she was like, "He said, yeah." And of course, Issa like, what? Say what? <laughs> I ain't got a boyfriend. So when they get off the phone, she says to him, you know, you really didn't have to say that. Like, you, he was like, what, the boyfriend thing? He was like, no, nah, I'm good with that. We we good. So while they're sitting there talking and having this whole awkward moment while she wearing that badass Ivy Park outfit, because I know that was Ivy Park, okay? Um, um, the dog runs away. Flavor Flav gets out of his collar and he is out. So, of course, now Issa is panicking because she done lost the damn dog, okay? She done lost the damn dog. She said, damn it, I had one job. All I had, I had one job was to be a good friend and now I lost the girl's dog on the day her mama had a stroke. And, <clears throat> um, so they looking for the dog, they looking for the dog, they looking for the dog. And then Nathan says, well, look, dogs a lot of times will just go retrace their steps and they'll go back home. So why don't we go back to the apartment, you know, and we'll wait to see if he shows up because us walking around here yelling flavor, flavor is probably not going to get us what we need, okay? Um, now, while this is going on, Molly gets a phone call from work. Now, remember we saw Molly, you know, volunteering to do something for the retreat, but she hasn't turned her stuff in yet. And Molly was like, well, I, you know, so her boss is calling and he was like, you know, we need that assignment you was working on. And she said, oh my gosh, she said, well, I told my assistant I was going to be out today. I was taking a personal day. He said, well, we kind of need that assignment. She was like, man, I was going to work on it today. He said, well, you know, somebody else can handle it if you can't get it done. And, of course, y'all yeah, know Molly, superwoman, no ma'am, no Pam. Oh, I'm going to get it done. And, so, and, and, again, she never did tell the man what was going on. She never did explain why she was taking a personal day and why she might have a problem. But she tells him, well, when do you need it by, like, I'm going to get it done today. So now you at the hospital worried about your mother and now you're trying to get some work done. You ain't got your damn laptop, Molly. You don't even have your laptop, okay? Tell that man what the problem is. Tell that man what's going on. Then Molly then went on WebMD and she's trying to tell the nurse all the things she need to be doing for her mama. And the nurse is like, ma'am, I'm going to need you to calm down. It's a little early in the process. The doctors are doing everything they, they, they can do. I hear what you're saying. I know you're concerned, but please trust and understand that we got this. 
Then they come to find out that her mama had had a stroke already. And Molly was like, what you mean? Like, why you ain't tell us? And the dad was like, well, she didn't want to worry y'all. And it was, it, we took care of it. You know, it was, it was mild and she was okay. Listen, I'm with Molly on this one because my mama is like this. My mama is quick to not tell us what's going on. And then you be sitting there finding out after the fact, like, wait a minute, what? You had what? Wait a minute, you were at the hospital when? Wait a minute, this is, you got what condition? My mama do that all the time. And then she'll throw it out there like it ain't nothing. Oh, I didn't tell you the doctor said such and such and such. And what point was I supposed to get that memo? So I'm with Molly. You know, I think our parents do it to protect us. But at the end of the day, listen, trust us to be able to handle it. But I would, we need to know what's going on with y'all so we can make the best decisions. God forbid if something does happen. Then Molly finds out that they never did finish doing the um, estate planning. So that is still in limbo. Okay. Um... Issa and them are sitting on the bench talking, waiting for Flavor Flav to show up. If Flavor Flav does show up, child, he came back, and Lisa was, you know, Issa was like, well, damn, he was smarter than I gave him credit for. And, um, you know, she says to Nathan, thank you so much for putting up with me. Thank you for your patience today. You know, it's been a lot going on. It's been a long day, and you've really been there for me. She was like, that's why I love you. And, of course, Nathan was like, yeah. And she was like, oh, shit, did I say that? Did I say love? Did I use that word, love? Did I say that? And um, he's not, he don't get freaked out by it. He gives her a kiss. Now, I don't remember him saying it back. But he gives her a kiss, you know, and all that good stuff. Now, while that's going on down to the hospital, the doctor comes in with his diagnosis, and it is not good. He lets Molly, now, if daddy ain't there, but he lets Molly know, um, Basically, um, it ain't looking good. It was a lot of damage, and they're gonna. It's gonna probably be some paralysis when she does wake up, you know. Um, so of course that's not good news. And Issa finally gets back to the hospital, and Molly is talking to Issa. She's like, you know, I didn't even know my mama had had a stroke before this. You know, I was out with some random dude last night getting my freak on while my mama was having a stroke. Like, this is just not cool. And Issa was like, girl, do not sit here and blame yourself because it's real easy to blame yourself. It's real easy to take it on. But, you know, you can't blame yourself and you can't be mad that you live in your life, right? And so she says, let me go and get you some to drink, you know. And Molly has a moment with her mom, you know, she's crying and she's finally letting herself feel what she needs to feel. And Issa is on her way to go get this little drink or whatever she was getting for Molly. And what do we see? Condola and that baby. What else do we see? Lawrence. And Issa sees him and he sees Issa and they make eye contact, baby. And Lawrence's face says it all like, oh, shit. And Issa walks off, but baby, she shook us. She don't know whether to speak. She don't know whether to keep going. But baby, she is shook us. Baby, and that is how the episode is. Now, the flash, the, the reviews for next week's episode make it looks like makes it look like Issa did something stupid, but I don't feel like Issa really did that. I feel like that's just like a dream sequence they showing us. Because I don't think Issa, I don't think she did. Anyway. That was the episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.